Uh, a lot of people have asked me to watch this video, okay? Uh, I don't exactly know what's going on. I've been tagged in, like, tweet threads about this. Like, 50 times. Uh, I'm not even kidding. Like, 50 times people have sent me this video to watch. Uh, Upper Echelon Gamers uh, has been, like, a content creator I've watched for a long time. So, we'll see, uh, we'll see what this is. Apparently, I think this is the guy, uh, Business Casual, and it has something to do with copyright. So, let's figure out what happened. Here we go. This video is brought to you by Guardio. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire Upper Echelon community. Also, it's not keeps, so no one gets to clown on Asmongold if he does ever watch this. Here's the... Okay. I can see why you guys wanted me to watch this. Business Casual, owned by a man named Alex Edson, whom I've covered before, has oh. filed three deliberate strikes for just a few seconds of content based on public domain images against a channel named Magnates Media. Uh -huh. Those strikes have initiated a countdown, at the end of which his entire livelihood and a very successful channel he has devoted the past five years of his life to... Let's see this channel here. This is an extremely successful channel. Look at this. Like three, uh, almost 4 million views, 1 million views, 700, 700, 2 million, almost 1 million, 1 million, 2 million. Yeah, this is very successful channel. Will be deleted. Great thumbnails. I consider this to be the fraudulent attempted assassination of a competitor's career. And eight months ago, I tried to warn people. All right, the title is kind of extreme. I get I that, watched but the original I'm pretty video. sure it's justified, so please hear me out. Let me know at the end if I'm right about that. Here's the situation. A while ago, I covered a lawsuit against YouTube as a platform by a channel named Business Casual. Not just any lawsuit, this lawsuit was being pursued by a man named Alex Edson, who recently- I talked to this guy a little bit, the Alex Edson guy, and he wanted me to watch the video, and I haven't actually, I, I, I feel like, I thought that this kind of thing died off, so it just wasn't gonna go anywhere. But considering this is still going, because I told him I would watch the video, right? Because I thought it would be fair to give two people, you know, their side of a story. I think that's fair. But uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Well, it sounds like a trap. Well, it's not a trap. I mean, like, he just wanted me to watch the video. He's not saying, he's not saying react to it on stream. He's just saying watch it for yourself. He bought the YouTube channel. He was not the original creator or the person behind the videos mm -hmm. and had now decided that a few seconds of his footage served as justification for taking down the entire Russia Today YouTube network. Alex Edson, in a rather long, high production value video, which, contrary to what he says, was not being suppressed at all, and many of you have likely already seen, went yeah, on the attack and years. asserted that YouTube was undermining America and helping the Kremlin because a channel had used a few seconds of their copyrighted parallax animations. This is the part where I tell everyone to go watch a bunch of additional videos for context. I know that's yeah. annoying, so I'll try to summarize in a very, very fast way. There are three videos that I made down below to back up every single one of these claims, piece by piece, as well as a link to the original Business Casual lawsuit video. Yeah, I watched one of these. I didn't watch, I think, w another one. One of them I might have watched. I don't remember. But here's the gist of it for people that don't want to sink the time into doing that. Alex Edson bought the Business Casual channel some time ago. Most of the original content there was not made by him. Uh -huh. Once he owned it, he discovered that RT, Russia Today, more specifically RT Arabic, owned by TV Novosti, had used a few clips from his videos and decided to do something about it. He got very, very angry. Fine by me, whatever, who cares? His yeah. chosen attack vector was to say that they had infringed his copyright egregiously and deliberately. He filed strikes, conversed with RT Arabic in emails, got them to admit that they had used his content, and then went for the throat. One problem, he actually put himself on record in an affidavit undermining the entire premise of his own lawsuit because there have been network level strike parameters set up by YouTube since 2019. More details in my old videos, his lawsuit was an absolute joke. Setting that aside yeah, because it, it doesn't anyway. affect me, nor do I care what happens between a copyright troll and a Russian state-sponsored media outlet, <laughs> yeah. that's the least of my priorities, we now have to look at his other lawsuit and general claims. Alex Edson wasn't just suing RT, Russia Today, trying to get every single channel of this global organization banned outright because they used a few clips that were a few seconds long. Uh -huh. He was also suing YouTube itself. Why? Well, because he thinks that YouTube is deliberately profiting off of copyright infringement. And you know what? Maybe. I don't know. Well, that's the thing is I think that YouTube obviously profits off of copyright infringement. Every social media platform in on the internet does. Like, Facebook profits off of copyright infringement, Twitter does, Twitch does, all of them do. There definitely are a lot of bootlegged movies and shows, but then again, those get shut down over time. 
yeah. as operating a platform at scale is an imperfect thing. Still, YouTube can Yeah, like realistically, you can't you you cannot preemptively remove all copyrighted content before people see it on a platform. It's just impossible to do. And be criticized for that. No question. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what's the real problem? The real problem is that in his own lawsuit, Business Casual's legal team argued something very specific, which is critical to understand. Okay. For context, I went through all of their shit. But one very particular segment stood out to me, and I have to read it fully here for everyone to listen to. From the court, quote, Let me ask you another question, Mr. Duff. The way that you describe it, it seems that it's just as easy to game the system from the front side as from the back side. What I mean by that is, it sounds like it's just as easy for a bad guy, let's say in this case, the defendant, to affirmatively or preemptively file a notification of infringement against you and then file two more within 90 days to give you three strikes. So what's to stop a bad guy from doing that if all that has to happen is that you just file a notice of infringement? In response, Mr. Duff, part of Business Casual's legal representation, said, quote, Your Honor, that is an excellent question. You are right. Bad actors are always going to try and find a way to game the system. The well, I, I think that the problem really is with YouTube because there's nowhere in the DMCA law that says that you have to take down a channel after three strikes. This has just been kind of like a... Th this is just like a rule that they invented, YouTube invented. Like, for example, like, I, I think a great parallel to this is, like, content creators doing hashtag ad. You don't actually have to put hashtag ad. You can put some other way of telling people that you're sponsored as well or instead. Hashtag ad is just an example of that. But because it's so ubiquitous and so many people use that practice, people effectively assume that you have to do it. So you see this all the time now where like people are typing out like hashtag like Chipotle partner or hashtag uh, Activision partner or something like that. And that is the exact same as disclosing uh, a hashtag ad, right? It, it, it is the exact same thing. So w the comparison here is that just because hashtag ad is super common doesn't mean that it's the only way that you can have a defense against like the FTC guidelines in the same way that three strike rule is not the only way that you can have a defense against DMCA. So I, I don't know why YouTube has such a like a, a black and white policy for this. And also, I remember with the Russia Today situation, the reason why a Alex Edson is suing YouTube is because they didn't take down YouTube after the three strikes. Because YouTube said they would, and then apparently, uh, uh, like, he wanted to get all of Russia Today banned off of YouTube by issuing them strikes. But then somebody from Russia called YouTube and said if they did that, that they would just block YouTube and all of Russia. So YouTube didn't do it. Big surprise. And uh, that's why he was suing them. That's what I remember happening. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember. And uh, anyway, the three strike rule was completely arbitrary. We're not playing baseball here, okay? Somebody just invented this at YouTube. The problem here is that the adjudication requirement is not only included in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. If you read the other provisions of the DMCA Safe Harbor, uh -huh. Section 512, it's clear that Congress did not want parties to have to sue to enforce their rights. So while it may be that the system could be gamed on the other side, that's how Congress intended it to be, end quote. That right there... Yeah, and, and you read what this person is saying. The problem here is that the adjudication requirement is not only not included in DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So what, what he's saying here is that the three-strike rule appears nowhere in the actual law. This has been invented by YouTube. Is business casual arguing that simply because he filed some strikes, it therefore means that YouTube needs to terminate the entire channel without him yeah. proving anything in a court of law. That's what we just read. And that appears to be precisely what he's doing now to a channel named Magnates Media. I think that's actually an extremely strong argument that YouTube is not doing anything wrong because the law never actually states what a good faith effort is. Like, making a good faith effort, I think, has to just be a... It's a legal defense. It's not like a, uh, a classification. 
YouTube sponsorships are all about being relatable. All of you every day are being absolutely bombarded by advertising and sponsors and offers. Oh, speaking of the advertising, he's, he's obviously going into the sponsor segment here. Speaking of that, we have to talk about YouTube is blocking ad blocker. Uh, we're going to talk about that after this. Links, which means one of two things. Either you click some of them, which can actually put you dramatically at risk, or you tune out, mm -hmm. making YouTube sponsorships basically useless because you just don't care. Yeah. I want to change that at least for this channel. Today's sponsor is Guardio, which is primarily a Chrome browser extension that offers threat tracking and online protection. I've used their research before in videos, I have the service myself, and as far as I can tell, there's actually at least one verifiable instance where Guardio blocked a malicious download and prevented an infection on one of my devices. Chrome Guardio setup, also showed me an said. instance where my own data was breached, Not which Chrome. makes this two separate instances that I can directly point to where the subscription more than paid for itself. And just to be thorough, online threats are always evolving. There is no singular method of staying safe all the time, but Guardio is an extremely valuable... Wear your tinfoil hat, that way nobody can get into your accounts. ...valuable tool to me, and one that I'm very happy to recommend. If you click the link down below right now, you can have a free scan, as well as a seven-day trial of the service. After that, it's $10 per month, but the upper echelon community will receive 20% off. Again, link down below, and a big thank you to Guardio for sponsoring the channel, as well as being one of the brands that supports my editorial freedom. I appreciate that a tremendous amount. It makes it possible for me to pursue further projects. If you're someone who uses Chrome, a lot of the same passwords, and also allows login credentials and payment methods to be saved in the form of cookies, Guardio is very worth it. You need all the help you can get. Okay, this is the juicy part. Magnates Media, who makes very good content, by the way, I've actually watched quite a bit of it, and I'm subscribed to them now, of course. Yeah, people wanted me to watch this one. I never did, though. Has produced over 250 videos in the past couple of years. Of those 250, a, a very small number are similar in topic to those of business casual by way of the niche that they occupy. Sure. Of that small number, the similar topics are effectively where the connection stops, with wildly different lengths for every single video. What I mean by this is that the business casual video pertaining to Andrew Carnegie is 16 minutes long, but the video about Andrew Carnegie from Magnates Media is 54 minutes long. Of right. that 54 minutes, quite literally one second of footage, not a typo or some like hyperbolic exaggeration, no. One second of footage is reportedly similar. It's this photo, actually. And I was also able to obtain a recording of the editor's timeline from Magnates Media, showcasing that this was not simply ripped out of a video and added to theirs. It is a deeply customized animation derived from a public image. Let me just outline the entire situation again. Well, then why are they getting... Why, why is he getting the copyright strike, then? If it was a public image that they animated? Uh, I don't understand. For absolute clarity. Business Casual filed two separate lawsuits, one against TV Novosti, where they appear to have received a default judgment in the case, which I wholeheartedly disagree with here for a variety of reasons, but whatever, I'm not going to go to bat for Russia today. They can defend themselves or not. Apparently, they can't even get an adequate lawyer as a result of international sanctions and pressure. The other lawsuit, however, was against YouTube, which was unceremoniously thrown in the trash, where they argued yeah. that they should not have to prove anything in a court of law. YouTube should merely terminate channels accused immediately. Now, after those events have died down, Business Casual, Alex Edson, files a strike against a similar YouTube channel to his own, covering business, finance, and entrepreneurial topics, but he doesn't stop there. Rapid fire, he files two more strikes, each one for less than four or five seconds tops. Okay. So he's filing multiple strikes and... Okay, and, and it's on this person. So basically, I, I get it. So he's trying to file three strikes to get this person's channel taken down. And the implication or the assumption is that he's doing it because this person is a competitor. That's three. Three strikes. That's the threshold for termination of a personal YouTube channel. Like, permanent deletion forever. Uh -huh. And Alex Edson, after his lawyer argued that they shouldn't even need to prove their case before YouTube punishes the accused, has now set this channel up for termination because of a few seconds where the footage shown... Which, by the way, is not true. Uh, so, so, like, DMCA says that you have to remove it immediately, but it also doesn't say that they have to keep his channel up either. So, for example, like, like DMCA says that you have to remove content immediately as soon as you get a copyright notice of it and you have to ban people that repeatedly break copyright these are two fundamentally different things because receiving a notice does not require a burden of proof 
but banning somebody who repeatedly breaks copyright does require uh, does require a burden of proof because breaking copyright is a technical term and receiving a notice is just simply an action so you they are right that they have to take the content down instantaneously or as quickly as possible whenever they receive it, but they are not right that the channel needs to be taken down because the copyright infringement was not proven. Copyright infringement is a legal term. A notice is not. ...is highly customized. Here's where we need a bit more clarity because Alex Edson is unhinged. In his original one hour, 47 minute anti-YouTube video about how YouTube and Google are trying to undermine America in support of the Kremlin because a media outlet used his shitty little intro to film 101 parallax animations. Yeah. Oh, God forbid. Alex Edson makes a very specific claim. After ripping our video from our channel, RT then used a digital eraser to scrape off our watermark, which they replaced with their own watermark. But they didn't stop there. That is categorically untrue. It did not happen. The watermark he's talking about is an inserted clickable button at a platform level done by YouTube. Oh, I see. So what he's talking about is this thing right here. Is that what he means? So, yeah. Yeah, this would just immediately be thrown away. Because it, there was no... The thing is, like, they did not directly alter the video. Because you can download, you can separate the YouTube video from these different uh, icons. So they would have never had to alter anything. That's so scummy. No, it, it, well, I mean, yeah, for him to say that, it's scummy. And, and I think the problem is that a lot of times what these people rely on is a court that is uh, technologically illiterate or a defense that's technologically illiterate that doesn't understand the nuances inside of YouTube, and then they take advantage of it. I think a really good example of this is like, remember the uh, the Amber Heard case where she just changed the saturation on two photos and said that they were different? Well, a lot of people, apparently the courts in the UK, thought that was totally two different pictures. It's because they're technologically illiterate. Like, that's what happens. So you can run laps around people that just don't know anything. And I think this is another example of that. Or Kyle Rittenhouse? Uh, I, I don't remember that one, actually. I, d I didn't pay attention to that very much. It's a way to subscribe. If you download the video through any other format ever, any at all, there is no watermark. Because yeah. it isn't a watermark. Alex Edson has egregiously yeah, misrepresented reality here. And that needs to be stated plainly. Hopefully well, I think that if you're misrepresenting, like this has always been like my perspective. And I I've given people this advice before. I'll say it again. Any time that you're doing business with somebody and you can't enforce the law, like let's say you're selling something that's illegal. Let's say you're buying something that's illegal. Uh, like just let, let's cut the, down the brass tax, okay? Let's say you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Any time that somebody shows up and they don't have the exact amount of money that they said they would have, they don't have the exact amount of things that they said they would sell, it is not exactly what it needs to be call the whole thing off because anybody acting in good faith is going to do exactly what they said they were going to do and i've always had the perspective that if there's smoke there's fire and there is no reason for a person to make things up or misrepresent reality if they have the facts on their side people can start to get a complete idea of what's happening or at least a more complete idea but I'll spell it out. Mm -hmm. Because of a collective six seconds, three in the first strike, one in the second strike, and two in the third, Magnates Media is about to have his entire channel terminated. Let me show you one of the precise images that we're talking about here. I want okay. there to be no dispute on this. Alex, you're not weaseling your way out of this. I swear to you, you're not. Also, this is the image that was specifically cited by Alex Edson himself in private communication with Magnates Media, where he said, quote, your videos constituted wholesale copying of my copyrighted content. You did not transform my content in any way whatsoever. You also took my copyrighted script, put it into chat GPT or some other generative AI software and made slight tweaks. I feel like that is such a huge accusation. How can you possibly prove that? Like that, that's crazy that you would say that. Yeah, how can you prove that? Because, like, my understanding is, like, so, so this is probably what Alex would say. 
he would say that he could run their script. He could type. He could text to speech, or sorry, speech to text uh, their script, and then put it into a detector. And the detector says that it was likely AI generated. But none of those detectors have a 99% degree of accuracy. So why are we going to like? Even if you use a detector and the detector says yes, that doesn't actually mean yes. Or it's, upon it, yeah, a brief it's still and casual viewing of your infringing video, my copyrighted material was instantly recognizable. Uh -huh. You did not transform my video in any meaningful way whatsoever. Your video is also about the same topic as my video, i.e., it serves the same purpose with the same target audience. I do think that 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 statement there indicates that. There is a obvious acknowledgement and there's an obvious, uh, oh fuck, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? There, there's obvious knowledge that this video is a competitor to his own video. Like he is effectively saying this video is competing with my video. There is no genuine dispute about this. And lastly, your actions will not be viewed favorably in federal court if you desire to avoid the same fate as RT, Russia Today. Well, I mean, Russia Today didn't get banned. Nothing happened to them, so <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay. I suggest that you immediately apologize for your egregious and unlawful behavior. Using generative AI tools such as ChatGPT, Dolly, slash MidJourney to tweak my copyrighted content is not transformation. I hope that um, I hope this person, if this is not true, I hope this person sues him for defamation or something. Because saying that somebody is just is is stealing their work, and, and I feel like obviously he's taking down his channel, he's damaging his career. He should a hundred percent sue him. He should counter sue him a hundred percent because if he didn't do this, and this guy's just making shit up randomly then there's no way that he can just do that. He wants an apology so he can sue because an apology is an act of admittance. I think you're right. Not defamation because private message. Very good point. You're totally right. I'm wrong. I, I thought this was made publicly. End quote. The level of posturing here with, with a fundamental misunderstanding of everything to do with generative AI, because he obviously doesn't know what Mr. he's talking Driven about, damage. but I mean, he's whatever, he's incredible. But setting all that aside, let's look at the facts. Alex sent this image, which pertains to this section of a <laughs> video he owns. I'm putting them one after the other, then side by side, and I want people to pay attention to all the differences. For starters, the parallax animation itself is entirely different. It's anchored differently. It's cut differently. Just look yeah. at how the entire industrial foreground zooms forward as a single image in one, but spreads as a three-layer parallax in the other. These are different fundamental. Well, you can look and see that it's not the exact same. Look at this house. Let me zoom, zoom in. Look at this house and look at this house. It spreads as a three-layer parallax. See? This one is clearly different than this one. And and by the way, the, the this this... The picture that they're doing this from is fair use. It's the same. There's no way you guys really think it's the same, right? A am I taking crazy pills? Here. Let's zoom in really, really close. Okay. So if we use a unit of measurement as, hmm, what can we use as a unit of measurement? Uh, let's try and use maybe this as like one of these, right? Uh, sorry, I, I can't really do a very good job at this. So we'll put it right there, okay? And then we use this one over here, right here. You think that this is the same size? Let me zoom in even more. Let's get down to the individual pixel level. Okay. So we're looking at this size right here.
and then we'll look at this size right here. The point here is much closer than this one here. I, I just, I, it's exactly the same. The left one is shorter. Yeah, the left one is obviously shorter. Here, I'll do this, okay? So this is the, the top, right? And then this is the top here. It's a different perspective. It's a different camera pan. Yeah, it, it, it is a different camera pan. And the point that I'm making is that a different camera pan means that the way that the layers were used could not have been directly copied because a direct copy would have used the exact same camera pan. That's the point that I'm making. Obviously, it's the same foundational picture. But what I'm saying is that the, uh, the, pre -pr the production of this picture and the difference between these two points in creating different layers in this, again, public use picture implies that the editing process was not copied. Because if the editing process was copied, this distinction would be exactly the same. But it's not. So that means that it was done in a different way. You said different house? No, I didn't. Straight different. Yeah, it, it is. The, it is, so basically what happened is that this is what happened. I did. Um, it's the same house. I, I, I forgot exactly what I said. But anyway, I, I don't want to get into it. What The point that I'm making is that you can see now, now that I've explained it, you can see that obviously like this point right here is different than this point right here. So the layering of the photo was not taken directly from this video, or sorry, from this video. You did, but chat's dumb. Yeah, I, that's probably true. Anyway, so I, I feel like this is just, it's so obvious. And also like using this method is not copyrighted. There's trees in one and the house in the other. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying like even on a base level because so this is what Alex Edson is effectively saying. So we have to understand what Alex Edson is trying to accuse him of. He is trying to accuse Magnate Media of taking this like uh, this parallax image where you take an image and then you use through some form of like uh, I, I don't know, like machine learning to separate the image into multiple layers and then make the layers move independently to create a seemingly real image. He's saying that Magnate Media, yeah, the After Effects, right? He took the exact thing that, uh, that Alex Edson did and they copied it. And what I'm saying is that because the layering is different, it implies that it could not be copied because the pre-production of it would have had to be different. So what? Well, the, the point is that it proves that he didn't copy it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm saying the video is different. So yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely, and also by the way, the fundamental like this, this picture is public, uh, is like public use. So it's not like he can copyright this photo. And the, uh, the process of doing this is also not copyrighted by him. You see what you're saying? I don't see what chat's saying. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. Yeah, you can't copyright clicking the same four buttons in Photoshop. Yeah, basically. It's public domain. Excuse me. The fair use picture is the same, but the altering of it is different. Yes, and he's copyright. He's trying to copyright strike the altering of the photo and not the photo itself. And what I'm saying is that if you look at these small details like this here, it proves that the altering is different. If you look at it at a pixel level, I, I, I sorry, like I, 
I, I will be honest. I think it's a mental disorder that I have. I love getting down in the weeds with this kind of stuff and like proving this stuff. I, I, I find it very interesting. So yeah, it's case closed in my opinion. It's clearly that did not happen. Relax in the other. These are different fundamental animations. Mm -hmm. Magnate's media has provided evidence of precisely how his editor makes these images as yeah. well. Also the timeline that his editor was working with. The smoke from the towers, the particle effects, the bombs, the transition. Everything is different aside from the original static source image alone, which is effectively a requirement due to the historical significance in Andrew Carnegie's story. Well, the source point. image is not owned by Business Casual anyway, which is Alex Edson. I'll, I'll use those interchangeably. Particular mill or factory. Business Casual, and I don't say this lightly, has previously tried to argue in a court of law that there should be no burden of proof before channels are permanently deleted by way of copyright strikes. He then files three... Uh, again, I just, I, I can't believe how bad somebody's misunderstanding of English or how bad somebody's misunderstanding of, uh, of, of like, the law is to think that. He, that's a very particular number to file rapid succession in one night. And he I, then I files don't think, three I, by the way, I don't think Alex Edson is stupid. I don't think he's stupid at all. I think that he knows that. And he's doing it to bully somebody. Right strikes, threatening the deletion of a similar channel with nearly a million subscribers. He corresponds with the owner only once, just one single time, and in that email he uses evidence that actually debunks his entire case. The yeah. animations are not the same for the Andrew Carnegie video. There is no legal grounds to strike that piece of content, yeah. and yet Alex Edson is demanding an apology. Why? And this is part of my own speculation here. The of guilt. Because I believe that his ability to force an apology is what led to his victory against RT, where he was awarded $75,000. Yeah, because it's an admittance of guilt. I've heard before, uh, I don't know if it's this way in the U.S. or which countries or states it's like this, but I've heard people give the advice to not apologize if you hit somebody's car because to the person who you hit or that hits you, because if you apologize, it can be taken as admittance of guilt inside of a court. Never apologize. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's on insurance cards even? Yeah. Acknowledging that you stole someone's copyright openly can have a serious impact on whatever case they bring against you. And so now he has filed three strikes, dialed up the urgency, created mm -hmm. this sense of panic, demanded an apology for egregious unlawful actions. Yeah. But the example he well, said... Well, yeah, he, he's trying to put the magnate media in a position where they feel like they have to act. And, and that way they'll make a decision or do something that's bad for them in the long term in his email is wrong magnates media should not apologize ever he should fight this and he will fight this and all of us should help him fight this because the way it seems to me business casual alex edson is trying to vindictively destroy a competing channel he's basically I th I, yeah I, I agree with him i think that this really needs to have like actual implications to it because the problem is usually whenever a person loses a case like this that's it but I, I think that if, you, if, if you're found out to be doing something like this and misrepresenting evidence knowingly, I, I feel like there has to be like a punishment, like a fine, jail time, some sort of resolution. Because you just can't let people do this and get away with it. Basically trying to assassinate a YouTube channel with three strikes while holding the deletion yeah. of their entire account over their head by using false examples. This False is the point where I have to, to ask you, yeah. the viewers, a really big favor. Okay, In particular, the mutual followers that I share with Asmongold. Hey, I hope I've earned the right to ask you this, and I, I do apologize if not, and this is out of line, but will all of you please respectfully get this on Asmongold's radar or any other creators Hi. who frequently watch, especially ones that are larger in size? Maybe I saw that Mudahar made a video about it less than a half hour ago, too. This is going to completely blow up. Yeah, I mean, because the thing is, as I said, YouTube has people like there is one thing that somebody like uh, PewDiePie, uh, fucking Ben Shapiro, uh, Destiny, uh, Hassan, everybody can agree on on YouTube. There are not 10 commandments. There is one commandment. And that one commandment is not to file copyright strikes. And to, well, I mean, not, not to ever do them, right? But to not file them maliciously, superfluously, or without extreme grievance. 
That is the only thing that people on YouTube are united in saying this is very bad. Yeah, no false strikes. Even the ones who defended Edson to begin with, with his whole uh, Russia and mm -hmm. YouTube's trying to undermine America and league with the Kremlin. I greatly appreciate Asmund's perspective, in particular on fair use. He has incredible reach. And even though my first trio of videos about Alex Edson harming the YouTube ecosystem did kind of well from a channel perspective, here he is again, Alex Edson. Well, the reason why they didn't go even farther is because nobody really gives a shit about Russia today. And also contextually, around the same time that Russia today, this thing happened, it was like right during the Ukraine war starting. So nobody wants to go out and start defending Russia today whenever they're seeing videos of Ukrainian civilians getting bombed. Right? It just like, it, it, that's why it didn't happen. We get worse than ever, and we need a lot of big guns to come out and kind of stop this from happening. A lot of major creators came out in support of his anti-Russia stance and pro-copyright and stuff, but yeah. guys, I've looked at all the legal filings. The current picture seems to indicate that he's deliberately trying to assassinate channels on the platform for profit. We cannot let that stand. What's even yep. worse, anyone who ever comments about this, or my previous videos, or mentions my channel name, or Magnates Media, or anything like that, or disagrees with Alex Edson in any way whatsoever, gets fully... What should they do? Uh, so what, what would YouTube do? If I was YouTube, I would, I would take down the content that he files against, and I would remove his channel. So like, because YouTube has to, legally, they have to remove content that they receive DMCA claims on. But I would also remove Business Casual's channel if all of these things are true. Because there's no reason, like, YouTube has no obligation to allow somebody to have a YouTube channel. Especially if they believe that this person is falsely filing copyright strikes. Yeah, they're a bad actor. Deleted from his channel comments. He moderates that thing like a hawk. Every time you, you say cancel them? Yes. Um, in general, like, so it's the same thing, uh, canceling. Let's talk about canceling. Whenever a bank robber is getting taken into the car, you know, the back of a police vehicle, oh, guys, I'm getting canceled. Oh, bro, like, this cancel culture is getting so crazy. Oh, what the fuck, guys? This is too much, man. These libtards are ruining my life. Listen. It's not getting canceled if you're committing a crime. That's just a fucking crime. Nobody says that, though. Somebody literally just did. Someone literally just did. What I'm saying is that you can't get canceled for an actual crime. Like, we're not talking about some sort of like, oh, this person said the N-word in 2011. This person referred to women as fat in 2015. That's getting canceled. This is a crime. These are completely different. Anything that isn't perfectly in support of him, he'll get rid of you. He'll purge everything because he's trying to cover up the fact that there's other information out there and the shady stuff that he's doing does not mm -hmm. look good. Not just the mean ones or the ones with profanity either, the comments. Anything that mentions the, the shady dealings that he does or the, the ways he's attacking people or the tactics that he's using, they're all just gone, and it goes even further. Prior to all of this, Alex Edson allegedly owned a multi-channel network called Power TV. Of course, I have all the evidence and the videos linked down below, but whatever. Okay. I'm using all the technical legal terminology, right? Allegedly, in my opinion, and blah, blah, blah. Where prior reporting done by me uncovered instances where he would perpetrate what I would define on a personal level as highly abusive business practices against small creators. There are videos addressing this by individuals. You can look them up. There is a highly detailed Reddit thread summary. And of course, my videos from before, they're linked down below. Yes, yes, go watch those. But the gist of it is that Alex Edson appears to be seeking out instances where similar content is used by YouTubers compared to the material he purchased, not made on the Business Casual channel, filing three rapid fire strikes, even ones that are falsified, to get those channels deleted, then demanding an apology, which again, might have strings attached. After the apology, evidenced by his track record with TV Novosti and RT, he will leverage it into a copyright lawsuit to demand as much money as possible from whoever he's targeting. And he's doing it right now, worse than ever, after arguing that there should be no burden of lawful adjudication. 
And you I see. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. So he's basically he's trying to look for excuses to send people notices and then he's especially doing this to smaller content creators because they don't have as much access to funds and and media and stuff. And because of that, you know, he's effectively extorting them for money. He's using a system that YouTube has created to like protect copyright holders and he's weaponizing it to extort people for money. YouTube should simply purge anyone that he files claims against. I'm beating the proverbial war drums right now. This cannot be allowed to happen. Six collective seconds of similar content cannot mm -hmm. be weaponized into the deletion of an entire popular channel unless they unless they apologize when the accuser has a track. Yeah, and he's also like, again, he's trying to put them in a position where they think they need to apologize in order to use the apology for leverage for a lawsuit. So then he can accuse them of, uh, or sorry, then he can extort them for the money. So it's like, a, it's an ABC and not an AB thing, right? He, he like, he files the claim, he gets the apology, and then he uses the apology to file the lawsuit, and then he extorts people by threatening to use the lawsuit to sue them. ...record of then weaponizing the apology to inflict as much damage as possible. YouTubers, all of you, please protect yourselves from creators like this. Rally, get the word out, make sure everyone understands their own individual rights, and do not let a corrosive and, in my opinion, evil presence in the space. It's hilarious because he said, don't be evil a whole bunch of times. Dude, you're the evil one. What are you doing? You, we can't let him destroy the channels around him with impunity. Now, in the interest of being as thorough as possible, because that is, of course, required when you're talking about legality and litigation, etc., Alex Edson is unhinged. He claims that Magnates Media used generative AI to copy him, but I yeah. received access to the script for the main video in question, the one cited by Alex Edson in the only correspondence he ever sent to Magnates Media, and plugged every single paragraph into three separate leading AI detection tools. No meaningful hits at all. While imperfect, these tools can serve as a baseline. I know how to fool them myself. Once. Well, okay, so that means that if it wasn't even detected by one of these AI tools an AI detector tool, then how could he have possibly made this made this accusation? Where did the accusation come from then? Because I assume that what he did is he took the script and he ran it into one of these, and that's why he said it. It's because the AI tool did flag it as potentially AI. But if it didn't even get flagged, so he literally just made it up. I, I wasn't expecting that. That caught me off guard. Sleep, but... To have 28 pages with no serious hits on three of the leading tools, one after the other, highly unlikely, but even better because I'm not going to expect everyone to just take my word for anything. I have reviewed the version history of the script itself, seen the timestamps, seen the edits, and the changes. It is my steadfast... Well, why, why would it even matter what the version history would be? Because the only history, the only version that matters is the one that was made public. Because Alex would have no frame of reference to judge previous versions on. Resolute and unshakable opinion that this script is not a generative AI derivative in any capacity of business yeah. casuals prior content. We're talking about the very fabric of fair use right now. Simply taking a similar topic with a similar image and animating it separately in an entirely unique way cannot well, be. Sorry, I keep pausing. Um, fair use is a legal defense. So you have to go to court to prove fair use. So it's not like you can say, oh, it's fair use, you can't sue me. You have to prove that it's fair use in court. The justification for a channel to be deleted. Damn near blackmailed, in my opinion, by Alex Edson, based on the track record that I see. And it's my hope that the YouTube ecosystem can rally together. It doesn't always need to do this, but it seems like this is one of those times. And rebuke this colossal abuse of the copyright system. I have very little uh, hope that that will happen because like after quantum TV where it was just like such an obvious abuse, like, and YouTube did nothing about it. I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if YouTube's going to do anything about it. Not always on the cutting edge of this. I know this kind of stuff happens. Similar stuff happens quite often. And I'm not always making a video about that particular case, but this one right here, I don't know. I'm kind of personally invested here because I yeah, talked about him before and he just went on to do something even worse. It's like, oh man, he's so deceptive. 
I'll be tracking this throughout the entire process. I don't even really think it's deceptive at all. I think it's just like, I feel like as soon as you understand what the trick is, it seems pretty, pretty simple. Because this matters. Alex Edson is, in my opinion, dangerous to the YouTube ecosystem and dangerous to the fragile sense of balance we all enjoy with regards to copyright, fair use, and income mm -hmm. security, and the content that we produce as creators for all of our audiences to watch. This guy is a threat to all of it. It is my view that he is maliciously weaponizing false claims to threaten the destruction of a competing channel just because they're competing and he wants free money in order to Maybe. force an apology, then use that apology to do precisely what he did to TV Novosti. Alex Edson is a malignant force, a parasitic infection of the YouTube community, and I have absolutely no respect whatsoever for him, his business, or his actions. I think the problem really is that as soon as one person does this and YouTube doesn't do anything about it, then a bunch of other people will start doing it too. Because why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you go out of your way to, uh, you know, copyright strike somebody if you can just take all of their money? And we really need to do something about this. YouTube, and this is a direct call to YouTube, and I'll be trying to reach out through whatever channels I can because something needs to be done. YouTube needs to suspend Edson's ability to strike content, remove his ability to even do this, kick him out of the program. This is a clear danger to the well, community. And that's also a big factor is that YouTube has no obligation to keep his channel on YouTube. So if YouTube feels like he is misusing their systems, then they can make an executive decision to remove his channel. Like, it doesn't mean that they don't have to follow through with his copyright lawsuits or whatever. Of course they do, because that's the law. But they can absolutely remove his channel. ...due to improper usage. Improper usage that I have now proven in this video. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very obvious when you dig in, but I can do even more. <laughs> Let me know if you want another video. Cut his option fully to strike fellow creators. Eliminate his, his option to do that until yeah. we can get a better handle on how bad his actions have gotten over time and protect the rest of the community from a completely unhinged asshole. Please. That's it. If you want to support the channel, all the links are down below. Also, if this blows up and he officially goes after Magnate's Media, or me for that matter, trying to get my channel deleted for his own personal gain, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, I'm not backing down. Alex, if you watch it, you will watch this. Of course you will. I will not back down. This will go to the bitter end. What you are doing is wrong, and people need to shut you down for it. Brace there yourself, it man, because I'm ready. Are you ready? Thanks for watching. Please help spread the word. All right. I don't ask this My often. Man. I really don't. Please do get larger creators to look at this, form their own opinions, however they want, because public pressure might be the only immediate and cost-effective mm -hmm. remedy without someone basically taking him to court and, and going balls to the wall. Yeah. If it has to be me. It'll be me. If I, I don't know. We'll see. But please do spread this around. Have a nice night, everyone. Well, uh, you know, I've always said that I'll uh, I'll take two sides of things. So, uh, Alex, I know he's seen my content before. He talked about my video that I watched at Upper Echelon. Alex, if you want to come on the show and uh, give your two cents on this, or you want me to watch your follow-up video about this and explaining it, why this isn't true, uh, please go ahead and let me know. I have no problem talking to you about it. Uh, it'll give me, I'll, I'll need a few days, obviously, as soon as after I, I find out that you're interested, if you are, uh, to like fully research everything. But if you are interested, I have no no problem coming, uh, you, you know, you coming on the show if you're okay with me recording it and doing everything. You're not going to play one of these games on me. But uh, other than that, I have no problem if you want to come and give your side of the story. So, yeah, uh, this looks very, very bad for Business Casual and for Alex Edson. It looks extremely bad. And I, I'm not even really sure, like, I, I think that that's, that's really it. I mean, it, it looks really, really bad for him. I, I can't see how he can defend that, especially whenever the messages were leaked that showed him saying something that wasn't true. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, I hope that, you know, he can just reverse these and move on. Like, that's what happened with, uh, uh, what's his name, Aiden Ross. Is, like, Aiden Ross got the same thing happen, uh, had the same thing happen with, like, the copyright stuff. And after a while, he just, you know, took everything back and that's it. I uh, should look at, uh, let Upper Echelon come on, too, at the same time. Big fight. Well, I'll, I'll talk to Alex Edson 
like one on one first and then if they want to do that they can do that or magnates media or any of these people uh, i have no problem being a platform for this kind of stuff uh, i i really really hate this stuff on youtube i find it to be incredibly corrosive and bad for the platform and i hope that obviously youtube does the right decision while alex edson is right that youtube does have to shoot first and ask questions later in regards to removing channels i don't think that shooting having to shoot first and and ask questions later can be used as foundational evidence to remove a channel that is a violator of copyright because violating copyright is a legal distinction and an accusation of violating copyright is not so unless they are charged with copyright infringement then I don't think YouTube has any actual obligation to remove their channel because they were not a repeat copyright infringer by the nature of the fact that they just received complaints and not actually judgments against them so I don't think that his argument works at all with YouTube. I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, you're effectively asking somebody to take an accusation as a fact and then act on it as if it was the fact. However, we'll have to see what happens.